Hi, welcome to the second part of the series where uh, we're trying to help Mary uh, get her finances in order. So continuing from where we left off uh, in our last video, uh, in the second part what we're doing is we're trying to go ahead and help Mary understand uh, the details of her data. So the first thing is when we left off previously we were looking at some data like this which is essentially just the date the description the withdrawal amount deposit and balance we essentially just move the data from an excel sheet directly into the um, into the database and that's good but it doesn't really give us the analytics or the power that we need to understand how her finances are placed so let's do this let's split the data into something that's more realistic into something that's more understandable and one way to do that is to right click the table we need to go ahead and split the date into uh, its basic components so that we can do some slicing and dicing so right click the account table click on design and you can see we've got a list of the columns that belong to this table and what we're going to do is we're going to add a new column called year now the year we don't want to sit and manually populate it so we're going to tell SQL Server that you need to compute or you need to calculate which year this particular date belongs to using this function so the function that we're going to use is called get the year of the date column and the date column is the first column that we have here up on top right and when you do that and you click save if you do select star from account you'll see that uh, we've got now a new column called year listed here there is another more simpler way to do this which is what uh, typically we do when uh, you're working with SQL Server for a fairly long time so we say alter the table called account add a new column called month which is calculated as month of date essentially here the term month is the name of the column whereas here the function month is used to get the month from the date column that we have up here right so you select that and you press this e execute it basically and uh, when you do select star or fetch all the data from the account table you'll see that we've got a month column in addition to month I'm thinking that we probably need day as well right so I'm gonna say uh, get the day from here as well so once that's done great so I've got the year the month and the date uh, we'll probably uh, extend this to create a week later on uh, when we uh, talk about dimension tables uh, later on uh, in the series so with the amount of data that we have here we've identified the date month and the year but uh, the next thing that we want to do maybe is to split the data that you see here for example you can see that we've got uh, the Bangalore as a city and then we got Chennai and if you look at uh, the data that we have you'll see that there's a trend typically every description begins with the city in which um, this transaction occurred so the way that we can do that is by simply selecting the description from the account table and you'll see that at this point all the unnecessary columns are uh, ignored and we've just got the city here and you'll see that the uh, the important distinguishing factor here is that immediately after the city there's a space and then the locality in the city so the best way to get that information of which city the transaction occurred is by clicking on or by typing in substring or using the keyword called substring so you say substring which means that get a subset of the string that's available in the description column starting from the very first character now that's all good but from the very first character obviously gets us to the B in Bangalore that we have here but how do you identify the space that comes after this character because in some cases you'll see that the string is seven characters and in some other places it's eight or nine characters the way that we do that is similar to the substring function we've also got another function called the char index function now the char index function what it does is that it identifies the position of a particular character in a string so in this particular case we're going to say in the description column find me the string that's got a space in it 
So with this what we're saying is select the description starting from the first character and then ending at wherever the first space appears. So if you execute this you can see I've got a slight problem here with my syntax so let me just uh, fix that. So you'll see that at this point it's identified just the cities. So with that if I just go ahead and put a comma and a star you'll see that uh, I've now got my data not just split by the time but even by location and then I've got the amounts so now that I have this information I think the next thing that I need to do is add a computed column for location so I know which city so let me go ahead and do that right now alter the table called account add a column called location which is technically a calculated value of the substring function that we just used on top all right all to the table all set execute so we've got location information we've got the values we've got dates so we're priming the data at this point which is a very important part of any BI strategy to make sure that your data is cleansed and uh, all the enriched basically so that you have uh, a lot of contribution from your data to help you do the analytics just the raw data often isn't sufficient when you're trying to do BI so with this what we can do at this point is we've got a lot of information you could go ahead and start analyzing it by just simply copy pasting this into Excel but we're not going to do that we're going to use uh, uh, we're going to use pivots and so in order to do that let me open up Excel okay uh, if you're hearing a buzzing sound that's basically the previous video being encoded so uh, yeah I got Excel open I'm gonna click data and under data I've got other sources I'm gonna select uh, from SQL Server and here I'm going to enter my server details so that's uh, there we go using Windows authentication I press next here it's asking me which database I need to fetch the data from so I'm gonna go ahead and choose my finances and naturally we just have the account table here so I'm gonna select account press next and press finish it's saying that there's already uh, an ODC connection called account so I'm just gonna override it and to do my analysis uh, I would prefer the uh, the chart and the pivot table because I already have a table from which I imported the, um, the, the transactions so now that I have this you'll see that uh, I've got a pivot table and a charting control so I can drag and drop my deposits and withdrawals you'll see that it's a count of deposits and withdrawals so I need to change that to a sum since uh, numbers need to be added over here right and uh, once I do that you'll see uh, I've got far fewer deposits coming in or Mary's got far fewer deposits coming in compared to her withdrawals uh, let's see if we can uh, split this by year so you'll see that her uh, withdrawals and deposits seems to fluctuate significantly from the previous year to the current year and uh, what about location let's see if we can uh, add some location information here as well right so in 2013-2014 we're essentially just trying to identify uh, the, uh, the location information or the database on location so you'll see that uh, as far as her withdrawals go a significant amount of her withdrawals happen in Bangalore and uh, she does have withdrawals in other cities as well but they are really nothing compared to uh, the withdrawals that happen in Bangalore so uh, it'd be safe to assume that Bangalore is the um, Bangalore is the uh, home base for uh, Mary right. let's check her deposits and there we go so you can see that as far as deposits go uh, again Bangalore seems to be the preferred uh, location so you can safely assume since most of her um, deposits and withdrawals happen in Bangalore that's her home base right we're gonna do much more with this data in the next video so stick around